Sorry about that. Kenan Ramos. We now have marriage equality across the land, but the LBGTQ community still faces discrimination as evidenced by the recent bathroom bills. And in fact, we even have a bill that is being trying to get on the ballot for a bathroom bill in this state. How can as you as a congressperson support the LGBTQ community? Equality means equality, equality for all. I, I support uh, you know, gay marriage and I will do what I can to make sure that the LGBT community feels safe. And uh, you know, with uh, Congressman Ramos, you're gonna have a friend. In Canada, Canada School, how can you as a congressperson support the LGBTQ community? One of the three planks of my platform is to fight for equal rights for all. Our inc incumbent has legislated discrimination. He says if somebody doesn't love the same person, type of person that he loves, then that person can't get married. He gets to marry who the person he loves, but if you're in the LGBTQ community, you're not allowed to get married. He, voted, he votes to, not, uh, to ban same-sex marriage. He's not, he has recently changed his opinions so that he is a little bit less discriminatory toward the LGBTQ community, but I think that that is something that a congressperson has to have in their heart to defend the rights of every person in the district. And uh, I would do that to the best of my capability, all-inclusive and equality for all. Thank you. Candidate Skoll. I've uh, spoken to disabled veterans who've waited two and a half years for a simple surgery. They've taken up to 17 years to get to 100% disability ratings for PTSD. Meanwhile, we're losing 22 vets a day to suicide. What will you do as a member of Congress to affect real change and make it easier for veterans to get the health care and disability ratings that we owe them? Our vets have donated and contributed so much to our country and they even put their lives on the line. It's up to us to be sure that we thank them and that we take care of them because they are protecting us. The world is not a safer place today. We need our vets to protect us. That means we have to take care of them. When I was chair of the Public and Global Affairs Committee, I organized events where I would invite the director of the foundation studying the PTSD to the so that we could to the committee so that we could have a forum for them to get the word out and get contributions so that the foundation could continue to help the vets and their families. We need to have research on PTSD. It's not fully understood yet, but it's understood more than it was. We need to but and and in addition my uh, plan to expand health care to a single payer health care system includes vets and the VA. So rather than have a separate system where vets who live in the Tri-Cities have to travel to Seattle in order to get health care, let's let them get health care in their own communities where they know the person giving the care, they have supporters, they have family and friends there to support them. And so with the single payer, they can go to their choice in order to get that health care. I think that that's a good start for helping our vets. Thank you. Um, Candidate Ramos, the same question. Um, disabled vets sometimes wait two and a half years for a simple surgery, up to 17 years to get 100% disability ratings for PTSD. Meanwhile, we're losing 22 vets a day to suicide. What would you do as a member of Congress to affect real change and make it easier for veterans to get the health care and disability ratings that we owe them? It's a shame that we don't treat the veterans uh, as we treat the recruits. You know, we ask for their service, and then we don't take care of them after they come back. Um, we can start out by the one thing they're going to work on, and I, I can, this, again, I'm, I'm going to be talking about ideas that I can actually work on in the next two years. Start implementing a system that, where the VA can actually talk to the Pentagon. They have two different IT systems. How can that be that they, they can't transfer the information between the Pentagon to the VA? We can start with simple things to make the system more, more accessible to the uh, to the veterans, so we can service them the right way. Yeah. 
candidate Ramos. Congress has refused to take up immigration reform, leaving President Obama to sign executive orders to protect millions of immigrants. Do you support a path to citizenship for undocumented residents or another solution to the immigration issue? Yes. Um, you know, my father came to this country undocumented in the 80s and he got an amnesty. And because of that amnesty, I was able to get an education and, and you know, reach my American dream. I have the opportunity to help a lot of people, and uh, that's one of the reasons I'm in this race. They're looking up to me, they're looking up to other leaders, and um, I'm gonna do everything that I can to ensure equality, and I do support for, uh, you know, uh, getting citizenship for them eventually, and what can we negotiate with the Republicans to make sure that we have a system coming through. I'm glad that the gang, the gang of eight bill is getting to, you know, they're dusting it off and trying to bring it back, and I think that the Republicans are feeling the pressure now, and I'm going to keep pushing that incumbent to make sure that uh, he brings up this, uh, this issue. So I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that happens. And candidate Skolt, Congress has refused to take up immigration reform, leaving President Obama to sign executive orders to protect millions of immigrants. Do you support a path to citizenship for undocumented residents or another solution to the immigration issue? I definitely support a path to citizenship for our immigrants. We all benefit when we have a path to citizen for our immigrants. Right now they are living in a situation where potentially they are exploited in unsafe working conditions and they struggle in poverty to support their families. With a path to citizenship, we can streamline green card, we can shorten up the wait times, we can also uh, improve border entry and exit, and, um, and with having a path to citizenship, we can also have sponsorship so that the immigrants are um, with a citizen and going through the process. If we have immigrants that become citizens, we have people who are filling jobs that are not filled in our workforce. We have people who are bringing new perspectives to our country. One of the biggest strengths of our country is its diversity. This country was founded by immigrants. We need to be sure that we continue the, the um, good fortune of the United States going forward by allowing the immigrants to become citizens and providing that path of citizenship to them. Yes, I do support that. Kenneth Skoll. Dave Reichert has represented the 8th District since 2005. Why do you think you are the right ch candidate to challenge him in November? I have met Dave Reichert in Congress in Washington, D.C. I have been to Washington, D.C. to discuss policy on the TPP, trade, infrastructure, sustainability, and education. And I met with Dave Reichert on that as well. So I am the person to take out Dave Riker because I know him. I know DC. I know other congressmen in DC. And I've been to the White House to discuss policy. And I'm going back to the White House to discuss the TPP and trade on July 13th. I'm ready for the job. I'm already doing parts of the job as it is. I also have the experience that Congress or incumbent Riker does not have. He came from law enforcement and I come from experience of a local businesswoman, a public school teacher, and a global strategist. And with my experience, I look at what's happening in the district and I know that when he votes to send our jobs overseas, he votes to not allow the workers to be reskilled, he votes to shut down the Planned Parenthood so that they don't have access to birth control and family planning, he votes to weaken the safety net. So let's go through that. No job, no way to reskill, no way to plan your family, and when you have those children that you couldn't plan, no help there to help you with that. I feel very passionate about not letting that trend to continue. I'm the right person to, to become the Congresswoman for the 8th Congressional District. Thank you. Kennedy Rollins, why are you the right candidate to challenge Dave Reichert in November? I believe that uh, I'm the right candidate because I'm connecting with people. I understand what they're going through. I've been, you know, in low paying jobs. I have the experience managing multi-million dollar budgets. I'm a small business owner 
at my age of 35, I have achieved a lot of things that other folks at my age have not. I've been what people call me an old soul. Uh, my, my age doesn't tell me I don't have the experience because uh, I've been talking to people, I understand what their problems are, and this race is about getting the voters out who care for you, who understand, hey, who's going to represent me better? And I've been to Eastern Washington, I can speak the language, and I know we can, we can flip the seat by getting a couple more thousand votes to be able to flip that seat. President Obama and Maria Cantwell carry this district in 2012. This is a presidential election year, and there's going to be a minimum wage on the ballot. Uh, there's a, going to be other initiatives that are bringing uh, Democrats to, to vote, and Donald Trump's the top of the ticket. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons I got into this race, because to make sure that he does not become president. And I've been talking to a lot of folks who are registering to vote, and that's going to help me to make sure that I flip the seat. And I don't think another candidate can actually do that. We've tried it before, and I'm a very different kind of candidate. I have the experience in not just uh, running a race, but I have experience in the private sector. And I also have experience understanding how the government works. I've done, my in I've done an internship for Senator Cantwell. I've you know, worked on committees at a local level, and I've also been appointed by Governor Gregoire to, to a board. So that's the starting point, and going back to the original, which was connecting with people. I, I know what they're going through, and, and they're list I'm listening to everybody, and I know what I can, when I say something, I'm going to be able to deliver.